Beyond Good and Evil 2 is massive, and traversing its open star system is completely seamless whether you're on foot, in vehicles, or in space. You play as a customizable space pirate captain who carries a sword, a gun, and a jetpack as basic equipment. Your character and weapons can also be enhanced with augments, which grant special abilities and let you experiment with different effects in combat. Trapping foes in a time-slowing bubble, for example, or freezing them in place with chained electricity. Enemies can also use augments, like these scientists who can heal their soldier buddies with augmented bullets, so you'll want to get a close look at who's carrying what and plan your strategy accordingly. In order to see what your enemies have equipped, you'll need your spyglass, which displays the stats, skills, and augments of other characters, as well as revealing more details about locations and points of interest, even from space. It's a key part of recruiting, too. Take a close look at an NPC with your spyglass, and you'll see if they have any skills worth adding to your space pirate crew. Of course, your crew isn't the only company you can bring along. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is an online game, and while you can play solo, co-op buddies can jump in or out at any time. You won't be tethered together either, and if you want to wander off and explore while another player does their own thing, you're free to do so. Welcome to Ganesha City, a dense, vertically built metropolis where the rich live at the top and the poor huddle in shanty towns built into the sides of the city's foundations. It's sprawling and richly detailed, and it's just one small corner of a moon called Soma, itself just a small piece of Beyond Good and Evil 2's gigantic open world. It's also built for aerial exploration, so in addition to your jetpack, you'll have access to a wide selection of flying vehicles. Any vehicle you see can be commandeered and driven, and they can all tune in to Radio Cheetah, a station by Space Pirates for Space Pirates. You'll also be able to fully customize your own rides, swapping out modules, wings, engines, equipment, and cosmetic options to tailor your machines to look good and hold their own in a fight. You'll need special equipment or skills to take on larger vessels, but your fighter ships are agile, able to execute barrel rolls, lock onto targets with homing missiles, and dogfight with police if you inadvertently break some city law like flying too close to a major tourist attraction or robbing a bank. And like your weapons, ships can be equipped with augments, enabling you to do things like firing healing missiles at your co-op partners. Your ships are also capable of hitting extreme speeds, covering thousands of kilometers in a matter of seconds. This is essential for getting around planets in a hurry, as well as for flying out into orbit to rendezvous with your mothership, a huge vessel that serves as your home base. Even out here in orbit, you can seamlessly transition from piloting a ship to spacewalking with a nano spacesuit to protect you from the vacuum. Popping out of the cockpit and into the cold abyss of space allows you to use your spyglass to investigate a planet, peering down at treasure hiding geoglyphs, cities, and settlements, all of which are still buzzing with activity far below you, enabling your co-op partner to explore and interact normally with city life even when you're this far apart. Alternately, you can switch over to the Universe Map, a fully 3D rendering of System 3 that can be zoomed in and out to give you an overview of everything from close-ups of a planet's surface to the continuously orbiting layout of the entire system. <sighs> I guess I have to be the one to tell you. You're dead. Fighting over scraps here. I've seen it raised by fire, shaken by quakes. Whatever you do in my city, I will hear about it. Seattle is firmly under my control. You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. So you probably figured out that you need to drink blood. You can't just do whatever you want. Cities are carved up by political factions. Never tell anyone about what you are. See, vampires are extremely territorial. Unwittingly poach in someone's territory and suddenly flip. We have one rule. You don't break the masquerade. <laughs> Welcome to the first day of the rest of your death. Having fun yet?
I'm happy to see you accepted my invitation. All I need you to do is to find a thin blood by the name of Slug. He's in hiding. But the Nosferatu most likely know where he is. Once you find Slug, all you have to do is purchase some information off of him. Feel free to use whatever methods are needed to get him to comply. I assume your handlers have sent you to find our smelly friend. You can find Slug under the freeway, or in a place the locals call the Jungle. He's smart enough to hide among the homeless down there, but not quite smart enough to do it well. Talk to him about coming to see us, and no one needs to know. We'll let you keep anything you've been promised from whoever sent you to me. But you'll want to watch yourself. Lots of unsavory animals in the jungle. I don't know you. That's a good start. Slug is a coward, but he survived this long on his own, so he's bound to be a handful. He's also not the only one you'll need to look out for. Even imagine it. That we 
which commanded the stars, giving life its fullest brilliance. The Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring. Shattered by someone or something. Tell me you don't see it. Look up at the sky. It burns. That's the Renegade's truck. I have it. I'll get them for this, Matt. Just keep your cool, kid. Remember, what matters is the water. This calls for something special. Oh, shit. In Dying Light 2, we have doubled the number of parkour moves, so let's use some of them now.
We're deep inside a dark zone. Let's run away quickly because the infection will kill us. UV flashlight, very strong, but needs to be aimed. Our stamina level seems to be too low to open it. Infection progresses. Our biomarker is turning red. Another way to use UV light is the UV flare. It covers a big area, but lasts only for a few seconds. Which viaduct? Over the track. Okay, on my way. Be careful, Wayne. The Colonel, he's a psycho. He doesn't mess around. Neither do I.
Welcome to the Cyberpunk 2077 2019 Deep Dive video. In last year's gameplay reveal, we showed you our vision for the world of Cyberpunk 2077, its quests, and visual design. This year, we'd like to give you a peek at some of the play styles you'll be able to adopt as your character progresses through the story. Here goes nothing. You're about to see sequences embodying two distinct approaches to playing Cyberpunk. We'll show you a strong solo build, that is, a character who focuses on employing blunt force and taking instant action, and a Netrunner build, a playstyle taking frequent advantage of stealth tactics, hacking, and battlefield control achieved using malicious software. Additionally, you'll learn more about Pacifica, one of the game's districts. Two gangs, the Animals and the Voodoo Boys. And you'll see glimpses of Johnny Silverhand, the digital construct who haunts our main character, V. A word of caution. Given that the video covers a section of the game deep into the main storyline, we have edited the footage to contain as few spoilers as possible. Be aware that the gameplay as presented does reveal characters and locations you'll see while playing the game's main story arc. So watch at your own discretion. Where are we headed? This way. In this video, you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game. We're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. No Pacifica with? Nah. You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City's standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. 